Boulder, Colorado. At about 2.30 a.m. on Sunday, September 9, 2018, a group of young men at the corner of 9th Street and Canyon Boulevard catch the eye of police officers driving by. One of the men in particular appears to be very intoxicated and struggling to walk, and several of his friends appear to be assisting him. The officers stop and approach the young men. They will soon come to learn that the intoxicated young man in question is Demetrius Shankling. Demetrius has just finished celebrating his 23rd birthday, and his friends are now escorting him back to his home. Put him down. Take him home. Well, actually, you guys, I, 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 him home. You guys have right been now. struggling to get even getting help, him up. So. Well, no, we were just fucking with him, but yeah, it's yeah. my fault. To I, be we're taking him home right now, I swear to God. It's my fault. It's cool. Where's home? Home, home is like, actually streets down. Yeah. down. They think we're really home. close to home. It's his so. 23rd birthday. <laughs> we, we, we got him fucked up, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, it's mostly honest, our right? fault. Okay. I know. Yeah, fair enough. You got your ID with you? Yes, sir. Can you guys step back, please? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, back up. you're good. You're good. But it was actually our fault, to be honest. <laughs> I understand that, but unfortunately at this point, he's he having ID, a struggle, so. We're, we're very close to our house. Is there any way we can help? help? Where's his ID at? I mean, do you have your ID? No. It's bullshit. I don't have it on. How do you not have your ID? Because he's wearing oh, a bathing shit. shirt. You have your fucking it's ID. It. I'm in my bathing suit. <laughs> he's literally... Hi. Hey, guys, just stand by over here. Um, I can give you hey, my what's, name. What's your last name? My ID. Does Shaq. that help a little bit? How do you spell that? S-H. We'll stand back. N-K-L-I-N-G. L-I-N-G? L-I-N-G. Okay. I promise you we're here. Okay. What's your first name? Demetrius. What's that? Demetrius. How do you spell that? We were taking uh -huh. That's I mean, true. T R I U S. Wait, Wait, well, how do you not have your passport? You have a just the donor. Because I don't have my passport on. Hey, Is it? Shut up. Let me do right. the talking right now. Now. Right. All right, I'm gonna go find his passport. Yeah, look in, look in that bush. Look in that bush. Middle name? R O Y. What's your date of birth? Nine nine ninety five. We're gonna eat my bugs. Where's your ID from? Colorado? What state? New York State. New York? New York. I'm press it. He's been known to be an asshole, so like, I understand. Oh, yeah, He's being not, a white dude. Not we can call my lawyer hey, if they do. Okay, guys, it's enough. Let me talk to him. Okay. He's right. an adult. Yeah. We can deal with no, it. Before to clear mail in New York. He just asked you to just be quiet, man. Like, Charlie, okay. shut like, up. Give it like five minutes. Right, okay. Shut okay. up. Charlie. You don't have to keep saying where you're going. Shankling. Uh, New York. Last name Shankling. Sam, Henry, Adam, Nora, King, Lincoln, Ira. Shut up, first name Demetrius. Not doing shit. I grabbed his passport. Hey, Edward, Tom, Robert, Ida, Unit, Sam. I'm sorry, I grabbed his passport because he's a drunk. Who cares? Who cares? Wow, homie. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Get the fuck over here. How tall are you? I have his passport. 5'3? Okay. 5'4? I'm sorry, I'm going to go away there with your friends. Yeah, 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 it's fine. I just remember that. Because he was too drunk and I was just trying to get home. That's all I'm trying to do. You guys are fine. He just shows. He's, he's fine. He's fine. Dude, guys, just stop talking. He's short. Sorry, guys. Five four. I remember I, I, I grabbed him. Guys, because stop he's talking. Short. Stop talking. Why would you say that? Well, I had his passport, so obviously I'm gonna talk. So but getting close. Like Come on. We still have the van. Yeah. Uh, Twelve three. I'm just fucking with you guys. Whatever's going on, we're not the problem. Yes, it happened. That's a big thing. Those people give their shoes. Oh, damn. Hey, what's your address right now? Currently? Your address. 8720 shoot.
here in Boulder? Nope. It's 945 Arapaho. Will it? Well, he's from the Springs. Doesn't matter. It's 945 Arapaho. Demetrius tells officers that he's a resident of New York State, and his ID seems to corroborate this. It appears that he is currently staying with his grandmother in Boulder. And, as this map attests, the residence is 0.2 miles away, a walking distance of five minutes. But regardless, the officers seem to have already made up their minds. Are you guys actually going to fuck with me right now? Hmm? Like I said, we were trying to take him out. I'm literally going home. I'll give you all the information you need. I'm going home. We weren't trying to cause a scene whatsoever. We were you know Officer Quintero? That's John. Mm-hmm. We've known for years. That's what we're doing, okay? Talk to you. Hey, what's your phone number? Phone number? Mm-hmm. You gotta call my grandma? I need a phone number for you. Just give, him, just give him your seven one nine four nine nine. Just give it to him. One five nine seven. Call my grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Um, Can you give me my shoes? Your name is uh, Officer Sean or S H something. No. Okay. <laughs> Having a something great night. Like you know Officer Quintero? Dude, just put your fucking shoes on. Let's fucking go. Shitty. Of course. I know you're just fucking sitting there. Copy. Just put your fucking shoes on. Let's go. Can I ask it, you a question? It, it literally works oh, like hey that. Hey, guys. Oh, yeah. Ask you to just be on. quiet. Just be quiet. Just sitting here. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm getting frustrated. And then just, just trying to go home. Just, 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 just be just fucking quiet. quiet. No, just, just put your shoes on. Just You guys are good guys. I understand what you're 342, can you have the transport van? Let's phone. He's gonna the nice transport nice. van. You're really gonna put me in time. Really? You guys can get going. Look, here's the deal. He's gonna go to detox, and uh, he he'll come home later. Not right now. Otherwise, it's gonna be worse. That's what we're doing in the first place. Like we're just taking him home. I know, the to- I know the talking is over, guys. Like, That's what it is. Like, he'll he'll call you all in the morning, and you guys can pick him up. Oh come on! Can so we avoid this. Like, hey, can, can what's you your name, man? Kelly, what, what's your Kelly, name? Stop talking. Let's get out of here. Right. I'm sorry. So I'm not gonna shake your hand. I'm just gonna yeah. explain something to you. Okay. okay. All right. So in the state of Colorado, okay. when we encounter somebody who's just this intoxicated, yeah. I know he's it, intoxicated it's, for sure. Really it's a liability issue. We 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 can't let him go even with friends okay. Okay. because That's what were to happen it makes sense. what were to happen is if he were to go home with you guys yeah. and say he were to to throw up and die tonight yeah. which oh, they throw up and die hey, that that okay. doesn't matter what, 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 what would happen is what would happen is you know like his parents or whoever yeah, they can see that we that we had police con that he had police contact us absolutely and there and then they could turn around and say okay well why didn't you guys do anything why didn't you make sure that he was safe all he's going to a medical facility yeah. he's going to detox okay, no ifs ands or buts no one's going to get him out of it yeah, so exactly. i i would yeah, strongly suggest that you guys saying. walk there's, home there's now let's go. Right let's, go. No. let's go let's go let's go let's go no let's go all right all right stop, stop. okay it doesn't, it doesn't matter right. what so, we say let's thank go so much. Yep. it doesn't I'll matter yeah seriously thank you so much okay we're done he'll call you in the morning you guys can pick him up okay so you're not going to sit there you got to go you're you're going to go how about you We're fucking... Going. Okay, so... Yeah, all I was gonna say... I was being very relaxed. Yeah. Most relaxed here. Yeah, I, 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 asshole. I, 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 I,
I'm not trying to intrude on your investigation. Okay. Because I heard you say that earlier. Don't touch me two hours away from my house. It doesn't matter. Go home. Marcus, go home. Legally, they have to take him. Marcus, go home. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go home. 375 for a night when I can call him and Uber home. Go home. Marcus. You guys are kind of being... Marcus, go They're doing their job. No, you guys are going to be dicks. She's fine. She's talking what? These guys are just being assholes. Sorry, I'm being honest. Like, I hope you guys let me go. Yeah. Hey. Stop. Stop. Go home. Go home. Go home. Go home. Oh, you stop. I'm gonna tell you, you need to cross the street now while you have the cross sign. If you don't, you're gonna go to detox as well because obviously you can't follow directions. Hey, have a good night, homie. Real big boy saying that walking away. I'm an asshole. Yeah, they, they, they went home. Stop. You called them, him you, you, you call them in the morning. To fucking stop. Yeah, right there. Tell him to stop. Hey, hey, man, just so you know, your light is still on on your uh, phone. Your light is still on on your phone in your back pocket. Hey, you just told him to go tell home. him to fucking stop. God, you said it was fucking like what's your What's your name, man? I'm Giva. It's nice to fucking you. I'm here to take care of my fucking friends. Sorry. Uh, what, what, what's your first name, man? Demetrius. Demetrius. All right, man. I'm Just, sorry. I, as hey. much as I yell, you gotta stop. No, it, it, it's sorry. all right, man. I'm sorry. I know as, you as you can shit. imagine. I know you guys eat shit. I'm so, a bio as, as you can imagine. I know. Like, I we deal with this on a regular basis, I right? I fucking know. This ain't my first fucking rodeo. But this is bullshit. Can I tell them to fucking stop and they sit there and run their fucking mouth? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so, so do you understand? I know. Dude, I'm sorry that they're do, running their mouths. It's alright. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. I live right there. I'm sorry that they're sitting here running their mouths. I am sorry. I know you got a so, so do you want to put your shoes back on, man? Because I would love to just go home. So we can't do that. Okay. You guys do your own thing. Press charges. Do we're, we're not pressing no, charges. Not pressing You're not in any charges. trouble. Just, we, you do have to go to detox. So, so we, we can't. So, can our I hands tell are you, tied, I've, I've been in detox a handful of times. Okay. I know what it is. All right. I've been there. Well, I, I appreciate you being cooperative with us, man. So, I, it's it's not that huge a deal. Like we but we don't is, but we don't have you and I and detox. So so we don't have a choice. For me, detox. When you put me six miles up the street, that's the difference between detox. And I literally live right there. So so do me a favor. I'm sorry. They're being assholes. I talked to them out of them being assholes. I did. I had your back. Uh, I mean, I did that's not necessarily true. I had said your let back. Dickhead 1 and Dickhead 2 do their thing. Dickhead 1 and Dickhead 2. No, you Dick pointed at us, man. So, so oh Demetrius, Demetrius, we we don't have a choice here, man. Alright, fine. So, but I'm, I'm asking, fine. would you like to would you like to put your shoes on? Because I don't want oh, what? You gonna arrest me? No, no, we just don't want you to get a cold or something. You. Can I just go home? I literally live right there. You cannot go home. So what, you're gonna arrest me? You're gonna arrest no, me? No, we're gonna you're take you to detox. Home. No, I've been arrested. Go ahead and put your shoes on. No, call the cops. We are the cops. We're the cops. Uh, they call detox. They're coming to pick you up. All I know is I had your back. Okay. They're assholes. I get that. I'm sorry. We're okay. right here. Like, I don't even live here. I live in Colorado Springs. Okay. I'm going to bed. What? You can't even walk through there. We're not going to walk you there. We can't. That's fine. Then call the cops. No. They're right here. You want to well, start on the paperwork? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Demetrius continues to argue he'd be allowed to return home. He is likely unaware that the Boulder PD have already called in two sheriff's deputies to assist in transporting Demetrius to a detox facility. Do what? We, we've told you everything that we're going to do. Really 
going to put me all the way up there? Yes. I'm right here. I understand. I know where you so, are. So, what can I do right here? If, you, if, you'd, that's, that's if so you'd like, Stop. you can put your, so or your shoes light. back on. Stop with the light. Stop with the light. I'll put the shoes back on. Do you want to put your shoes on or not? Yes, turn the light off, dude. It's beyond that's beyond. not how this works. Weren't even my shoes to take off. Who's got it? Whose shoes are they? I took them off for you guys. Why? Because you guys came up here running your fucking mouths. <laughs> no one was running any mouths, man. <laughs> Supposed to be. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, uh, you think that's funny? Oh, I've got a passport. Yeah. Demetrius Shankly. So. So you understand how this works? You said you've been in detox like four or five times, right? That's a handful of times. You, well, that th that can't happen tonight. So you let them go. Well. They walk out of here. They're not the ones stumbling around and. In the grass, not, the not able to walk. They're the ones that off, but I'm sitting here. Let's yep. be real. Here. You were laying. I'm not Couldn't. laying shit. We can call my lawyer if you really fucking want. You're not in any trouble, man. You're not under we're arrest. We're gonna call my lawyer, though. We're not doing that. That's not how this works. So. Don't fucking be shit. Come here, stand up. Stand up, stand up dude. Get the Come on. Come on. Enough of this. Don't stand up. Enough of what? Get up. Enough of Get up. Get enough of what? Like that. Cuff of what? Cuff of what? You're going I'm to detox. Fight. I'm not fighting anything. It's fine. Anything. You're not fighting anything. It's I'm going. not fighting shit. Then you're going to detox. What the fuck do you even cuff me like I'm fighting something? So, so you're required to be cuffed I'm not during a transport. I'm not fighting anything. You're not I'm literally not fighting shit. Stand up Asshole like an adult. behind me is running his fucking mouth like I'm fighting some shit. You talk big for a small kid, dude. How about I beat your fucking ass? Demetrius, <laughs> <laughs> what's You can just sleep. I'm not doing anything. That's good, you're walking to my van. I'm literally sitting here. Good. You're walking to my van. So I'm gonna ask I'm you. I'm literally sitting here. Demetrius, listen to me for a second. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask my lawyer. I'm gonna, we're not gonna talk to lawyers, we're yeah, talking we're to you. Are you an adult? Fun. Are you an adult yeah, or not? We're gonna have some fun, man. Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. What are you pushing? Get up. Oh, oh wow. There we go. I'm not doing The back of transport vans such as this one is divided lengthwise into two narrow compartments consisting of a bench equipped with safety belts. Demetrius, who is six feet tall, is placed into the passenger side rear compartment. As deputies struggle to load Demetrius into the van, keep in mind that the length of each compartment is less than five feet. Stand. One. Step. Ready? Step. <laughs> Alright? Step in. Step in. Step. Step in or you're going on your face. Demetrius, come on, dude. Be a grown man. Let's fuck that. Demetrius. Demetrius. I didn't do jack shit to do that. You know that. You, you understand that this is not like you're not in trouble. This is just you're not safe right now. And you're you highly intoxicated. Not, I should not be here. I'm not highly intoxicated. Fucking test me right now. I'm not highly I intoxicated. I can smell it on you, big guy. Oh, on, can you? What do you, what, what do you smell? Step on up, Junior. What do you probably smell? Probably some fucking Mike's hard iced tea or some shit. Oh, uh, fuck. Come on. Let's uh, just get in the damn... Where are they? Yeah. Where are they? Turn around. Demetrius, do you want to go to jail instead of going to the detox? Let's just turn around. Yep. Sweet. So, 
So, sit down. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Hey, give it up for me. Yep, adios, muchacho. There you go, handsome. Clearly, when attempting to get him to step inside the van, Demetrius, although never combative, is not the most eagerly compliant. The deputies, presumably not under the influence, however, seem to lose their patience with him rather quickly. One of the deputies can be heard early on, telling Demetrius that if he doesn't comply, then he'll be going in on his face, which is exactly the way they end up shoving him in in the end. Step, step in or you're going on your face. Finally, as the deputies manage to secure the door shut, they can be heard uttering distasteful phrases such as adios muchacho, hasta la vista, and another satisfied customer, as if to congratulate themselves on a job well done. Next, the deputies begin the drive to Boulder's Addiction Recovery Center, ARC. The drive takes approximately 16 minutes. Upon arrival, they stop the vehicle at the front of the building, and they make their way to the back of the van to assist Demetrius out. Another officer's body cam footage captures the following. God damn it, Demetrius, wake up! Demetrius, Demetrius, wake up. Wake up, Demetrius, wake up. Demetrius, wake up. Two, Demetrius. Get him out of the puffs. Demetrius, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Start doing, start doing CPR. Both over. Go, go, go. Demetrius, yeah. wake up. Now. Go ahead, go ahead. Two, one, three, 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 four, five, 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 six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Good night, one. Are you still the yard? Four. Stay for our window. Six, seven, eight, three, 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 four, five, six. God damn it. Come on. Come on, buddy. Demetrius, wake up. Come on, Demetrius. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, Demetrius, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Demetrius. God damn it, what the fuck happened? Demetrius, come on, buddy. God damn it. Demetrius, wake up! Demetrius, wake up! Probably, it's at 1405 Broadway, apartment 403. Come on, Demetrius, wake up! Demetrius. Yes. Got it? Like that. 118, can you acknowledge? No, go ahead. Come on, Demetrius, wake up! Here, let me. I got you, I got you. Go ahead. What the fuck? He was. I thought it was. Oh my god. You got a pulse? No. Jesus fucking Christ. You guys already radio for someone? Yes. Yeah, they're in route. Emergency. Other car? Go ahead. Come on, Demetrius, wake up, please! Make 
Going until they. Yep. Yep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Uh, intoxicated. Got him in here. Um, and about, uh, we'll say, the Canyon and. Ninth. Ninth. Well, when did he. He was. He, he resisted. Has, he, he has foot up against the door, and he was rigid. But when did he stop? His, his leg went limp at what Canyon and uh, Folsom. You guys know just alcohol. As far as we know. Yeah. When deputies open the doors to the van, they discover Demetrius is unconscious and unresponsive. He's not breathing and he has no pulse. A significant portion of the video is censored, but the audio easily lets us in on what is happening. Deputies can be heard as they perform CPR on the young man, all the while frantically pleading with him to please wake up. In the end, medical personnel are able to get Demetrius's heart beating again. His pulse remains weak, however, and he is taken to Boulder's Community Foothills Hospital in critical condition. Later, Demetrius is transferred to another hospital in Denver, where he remains in a coma. Medical professionals know that even if he should awaken, his brain will never be able to make a recovery. Unfortunately, come the evening of October 6, 2018, nearly one month after his 23rd birthday, Demetrius Roy Shankling is pronounced dead while at the hospital. An autopsy report later rules the cause of death to be homicide as the result of positional asphyxiation with alcohol and amphetamine as contributing factors. Following this discovery, the two deputies responsible for Demetrius's transport, James O'Brien and Adam Lunn, are relieved from duty and charged with manslaughter for their role in Demetrius's death. Colorado law defines manslaughter as a situation wherein a person recklessly causes the death of another person. More will be discussed about the outcome of the trial, but first there still looms the question of exactly what did happen to Demetrius inside that van. Perhaps it's best we have a look for ourselves. Once again, viewer discretion is advised. Recall that prior to entering the back of the van, Demetrius was quite talkative. Stand up. Enough of what? Get up. Enough of what? Get up. Hey, just enough of what? I'm, I'm not fighting That's anything. That's fine. You're not fighting anything. I'm not fighting shit. Then you're going to detox. What the fuck do you mean cuff me like I'm fighting shit? Step in. Oh, what am I going to do? Step. Step in or you're going to oh, your face. Oh, uh, uh, what am I going to do? Fuck me. Be a grown man. Oh, fuck me. I should not be here. I'm not highly intoxicated. Fucking test me right now. I'm not highly intoxicated. I can smell it on you, big guy. What, what do you smell? Uh, but, come on. Let's just get in the damn... Where are they? And yet, it's odd that after he's shoved face down into the van, he doesn't say another word. Sit down. Come on, dude. Let's go. Nor does he even make an attempt to move for the entire 16 minute long ride. Rather astonishingly, he remains motionless in this awkward position you're looking at here. The only thing more disturbing than his unnatural position is the fact that not once do either of the deputies check to see if the young man is all right. 
If you watch the video frames closely, you may be able to notice that the only noise and movement Demetrius appears to make after that occurs on two occasions. The first of these occurs at approximately 22 seconds past 3.05. To best be able to see what occurs, keep an eye on the image in the upper left of the screen. <coughs> The next instance occurs at approximately 34 seconds past 3.05. Some of the footage of the transport has been edited out, but we can tell from the point where the video picks back up that Demetrius does remain perfectly still for the entire duration of the ride. Upon arrival at the ARC, when deputies open the back door, Demetrius falls over onto his side. This is not a voluntary action. Demetrius's sudden cessation of all movement upon his entry into the van could likely be indicative of cardiopulmonary arrest, in which case quick and immediate attention would have made the difference between life and death. Instead, as we know, it would be another 16 minutes before he would be discovered upon arrival at the ARC. This in spite of two sheriff's deputies who have been trained as to the dangers of restraint and positional asphyxia and who have also sworn an oath to serve, safeguard, and protect, being less than a few feet away the whole entire time. Not once did either of these two men think to simply check up on the status of their detainee. Demetrius's official cause of death, positional asphyxia, is a form of asphyxia that occurs when a person's position prevents them from breathing adequately. The fact that drugs and alcohol are listed as contributing factors is not to say that these things should take any of the blame off of the deputy's shoulders. Rather, it means that trained law enforcement officials should have recognized the increased risk of positional asphyxia and they should have responded appropriately, with heightened attention and care. During the trial of the two former deputies, Demetrius's grandmother informed the court that her grandson had also suffered trauma to his head and his spinal column due to the rough handling he had received. In a heartbreaking account, his grandmother told of how doctors had said that the spinal damage Demetrius had incurred may have meant that not only would Demetrius have been in a vegetative state should he have ever awakened, there was a chance he would have had to live out the rest of his life as a quadriplegic as well. Both of the former deputies took turns addressing the court prior to their sentencing. The supervisor, James O'Brien, stated that he took full responsibility for his actions and that he understood the ways in which he had breached his sworn duties. This only to be followed by statements which appear to pass the blame onto something else, such as not being familiar with the way that the van operated, for example. I swore a duty, and I stand before you knowing that I failed in that duty. I made mistakes. And I stand before the court to own those mistakes. I make no excuse for my actions. I take ownership for what I did. I didn't know there was another container that was longer. I didn't know that the, the container we put him in was too short. I wasn't familiar with the van, but that's irrelevant. I cannot make any excuse. I thank you. Despite the former deputy's disclaimer, those sound a lot like excuses to me. Did he at least know not to place an intoxicated individual face down in what they call the prone position? This is something I know that he was taught and that he was at least at some point familiar with. Perhaps the most glaring problem is that not once throughout his spiel, which came equipped with crocodile tears and wishes that he could take places with his victim, not once did he utter the simple words, I'm sorry. Ex-Deputy Adam Lunn comes across in similar fashion, 
claiming to acknowledge that he failed to do his duty, and he alludes to understanding the pain that his actions have caused. But in the end, one has to wonder if this isn't all just for the benefit of the court, something conjured up in the hope of garnering sympathy so that he will hence be handed a lighter sentence. First, I want to apologize to the family, Demetrius. My involvement that night was something that will impact them forever. I've sworn an oath to honor and protect the innocent. I will live the rest of my life knowing that I failed to honor that sworn oath the morning of September 9, 2018. I think of my children and the many, many firsts that a parent gets to experience with their children. My actions that night directly affect Demetrius' family. They will never get to experience those firsts, and I am the reason why. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Whenever anything like this happens, as human beings, there's a part of us that likes to hold out hope that the bad guy feels remorse, no matter how deep down. When taken at face value, ex-deputy Lund's statement to the court seems to come close in delivering in terms of what people desire to hear. He starts out with an apology, and then he seems to take responsibilities for his actions on the night in question. While probably never an AP English kind of guy, he nonetheless manages to get his point across without passing the blame onto anyone or anything else. But upon further scrutiny, his words end up just being a really good example as for why you should never take a pre-sentencing speech at face value. Because meanwhile, as ex-deputy Lunn is forcing tears behind a podium, and it turns out that his wife Erica Lunn, with the assistance of others, has created at least three separate websites for the purpose of shamelessly and tastelessly begging others for money to help her during her time of need. I don't know what I'll do if my husband is wrongfully convicted, one of the wife's petitions starts, and it only gets more disgusting from there. By conveniently leaving out any pertinent facts which might make her husband look bad, and by then twisting or just downright adding in some of her own facts, Erica paints her husband out as a wrongfully accused victim of the system, a hero who could do no wrong. Among other false statements, Erica Lunn writes about the incidents she was not even there to see. Shankling grew more and more crazed, which gave her husband no choice but to restrain him. And then, quote, as the deputies shut the van door and pulled away, their drunk passenger was combative, end quote. In looking at this as objectively as possible, does the man inside this vehicle appear to be combative in any way? How could he be? The man inside this vehicle is in fact unconscious. This is just one of many facts which Erica Lund has no problem blatantly lying about. She continues in similar fashion, omitting Demetrius' cause of death and instead insinuating it was his own fault, and stating that Demetrius was abusing her husband prior to the transport. Her tone comes across as condescending or as if inconvenienced whenever she refers to the victim, Demetrius. At one point, she calls him a criminal, even though her own husband can be heard assuring him he has not done anything against the law. You, you understand that this is not like you're not in trouble. This is just you're not safe right now. You're not in any trouble, man. You're not under arrest. You're not under arrest. You're just sit up and stand up. Like an one confusing aspect is the following assertion made by Erica Lund. In her words, quote, Adam takes his oath to protect and serve seriously, even when it comes to unruly criminals, end quote. The arguable phrase unruly criminal aside, knowing that Adam never fails to take his oath seriously, then what accounts for the following? I've sworn an oath twice in my life to honor and protect the innocent. I will live the rest of my life knowing that I failed to honor that sworn oath the morning of September 9, 2018. Her family's GoFundMe page, perhaps due to their terms of use, does not attack Demetrius openly, but it still leaves out crucial facts, exaggerates, and makes Erica look out to be like some helpless, pampered individual, once reliant on her husband's income, and now too good to conceive of going to work for herself. And just for the record, all three donation pages I came across remain up to this day. The GoFundMe page alone has already raised in excess of $12,000, plenty more than enough to help Erica re-enter the workforce for herself, and yet she is still asking for much more. My main question remains, why is it now everyone else's responsibility to provide this lazy woman with charity, and especially because she chose to put her own blind faith in a man who turned out to be grossly inept in his chosen line of work? I think that in the end, what rubs people the wrong way isn't 100% the fact that she's asking for money as if she's the victim, which is disgusting enough on its own, 
but it's in the way that she distorts the truth, omits facts, and lies in order to try and obtain said money. To say it's the ultimate slap in the face for the real victim, Demetrius Shankling, would be putting it mildly. All this furthermore does is take Adam Lund's statement and any hope we had in its genuinity and throws it out the window entirely. At the end of the day, however, I think we can all mostly agree that Erica Lund's perceived travails matter little when stacked up next to what Demetrius' loved ones are now left to endure. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. They have no idea what they have caused this family. On the morning of August 28th, 2021, after deliberating for approximately eight hours, jurors handed down a verdict of guilty in the cases of former sheriff's deputies James O'Brien and Adam Lunn. Following statements presented by both defendants, James O'Brien received six years imprisonment, the maximum time allowed due to his role as supervisor at the time of the incident. His former partner, Adam Lunn, was sentenced to serve three years. Once the trial was concluded, the defendant's attorneys could not be reached for comment, but District Attorney Michael Doherty did make a statement regarding the outcome. Uh, our job is to do the right thing and to do justice in every single case, regardless of who the other individual is, without fear and without favor, and that's what our team worked for today. District Attorney Michael Doherty said if it weren't for Lunn and O'Brien, Demetrius Shankling would be alive today, and he called the sentences appropriate. In the end, it's not a question of malicious intent. Clearly what occurred was an accident, and there was no desire on behalf of the deputies to harm Shankling, as is pretty evident in the reactions we heard upon the discovery of Demetrius's unconscious body at the ARC. Holy shit! Holy fucking shit! God damn it, Demetrius, wake up! Demetrius, oh, come on, Demetrius, please! However, given the coroner's determined cause of death, Demetrius's demise could have been avoided if the deputies had placed the victim properly in the manner which they had been taught and diligently trained to do. Furthermore, not one time was Demetrius ever checked up on during that 16-minute ride to the ARC. It was only my sheer assumption that the van was equipped with a monitor up front. If not, a quick stop wouldn't have hurt anybody. To, uh, if you just leave that there, we'll go pick it up later. Okay. At the ark? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll go pick it up when we're done on the hill. All righty. So I just signed there with who transported him. I mean, that was where I signed. Oh, right here? Yeah, it says person transporting to facility. An hour, sure. And then they What's do. That? They, they sign. Oh, they don't have a way to get back into the PD, so we're just going to take them back okay. to the PD. Perfect. Perfect. Well, they, the, the, no, yeah, the, just keep the, whole the ARC yeah. people have to sign the bottom for them. For the yeah. Yeah. And, and then anyway, they get the white, and then you want us to leave the Just carbons. leave the whole thing there. Okay. Uh, and, we'll pick and, and we'll go pick it up okay. here in a little bit. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate Thanks, it, guys. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Hey, how you doing back there, buddy?